equity comes, equity goes, yeah. but the cash will always flow. I saw you put a post. Okay, that is like the silliest statement I've ever heard. Hey, Tom here, Flip Anything USA. Uh, hey, I'm going to do a quick review here on uh, Pace Morby's favorite real estate deal. I'm going to tell you why I don't like it, why I think it's really bad advice. And then I'm going to show you one of my own that I think is far better. And uh, please comment. Every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central Time, I do a live webinar. You can talk to me direct, ask me any question you want. I'll show you how I made my first million, how I made tens of millions thereafter. You're going to enjoy it. See ya. It's the best thing I ever did. I've been critical of Pace and where he sees opportunity. I see a lot of disaster. But I'm going to watch this with an open mind and let's see. Maybe, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll just see what we think. All right. So a big part of this is that you're trying to accumulate wealth, get cash flow, all that kind of stuff. And you want to be able to do it with no money. So this is a deal, 1906 South 78th place. You guys can look this up. I'm never going to sell this property. I am going to bump the speed up just a little bit here. Okay, I'm never going to sell it. And I bought this property for $100,000, okay? Now, the ARV at the time, or the retail value that, at the time, was $110,000, okay? So no, not much equity. Not much equity. Okay, um, that was the ARV, but the as is value, what it was worth at the time was probably maybe $80,000. So, so the risk in this is you become a speculator right away. If, if you buy this, this is the problem with a lot of the things that I see Pace go right into. It's creative terms that require speculation and some things that probably won't happen. Watch. Upside down. All right, so I actually paid upside down. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, Appreciate his honesty. <laughs> so the house's value, the as-is value is about $80,000. If I put like 10,000 into it, I could have sold it on the retail market for 110. But lost money after closing fees, commissions, and so right. on. So if the ARV was 110. See, he's already setting this up. That it's kind of a losing deal, but somehow it's gonna make sense. And I'm just telling you, everything I buy is worth more than I pay for it. Everything I buy, all my students, and I have many millionaire students in the last two and a half years, and I urge you to go look at my students. I've got the most successful students on the internet, bar none, comparing to Payson Morby students, Jerry Norton students, Grant Cardone students, uh, anybody, anybody students at all. Compare my students to them. That's how you know good, a good teacher is by the success of their students. So what would you have to buy this on a cash deal to, to make it make sense? Probably 50, 60? Yeah, 70% less repairs right. is gonna put you down there at 50, 60. Dale and Susan own this house outright. They have no loan, they have nothing on it, they own it outright and they have tenants in the property. So along comes Pace and Pace comes in and goes, what do you want for the, the house? And they go, well, we would really like $90,000. Okay, and you guys are gonna understand why did I pay $100,000 mm -hmm. when they originally told me 90? Because this is what she said. She said, I want $90,000 cash. And I go, well, Susan, there's no way that's going to happen because there's no upside for anybody. And she, she understood that. Mm -hmm. I said, but I would buy it on terms. If you would be willing to let me take over the property and you'd create a note or you'd create a, a, an IOU, I would take over the property. And let me ask you, Pace, oh. why didn't they want to retail it for a hundred? Because they had a family member in the house. Oh, that's right. So and so I told them the I would take over the family member. And deal with the and deal with all tenant. The, I'm wondering why they didn't retail it at the as is value of 80,000. I mean, that would be like the most reasonable to consider, but anyway. Deal with all the, all the stuff, okay? <clears throat> so I said, I'll take this over. And so here's what we did. We structured a deal where she asked for, she said, Pace, I want $20,000 down and I want 8% interest. And I said, Susan, I'm not gonna do that. I'm definitely not a good buyer for you, but why don't we do this? Why don't we go from the $90,000 you're, you're asking for Let's go from ninety thousand dollars that you'd like, which is still ten thousand over its as-is value of eighty. Right. Okay. I will pay you one hundred and ten thousand dollars, and I'll pay. Or I'm sorry, I'll pay you one hundred thousand dollars. And the reason being is we're going to pre-build all the interest in, the and of ten thousand. Of ten thousand. So okay. I'm going to guarantee you ten thousand dollars of interest. So what I ended up buying is I ended up buying the house for ten thousand dollars down, and zero percent interest. So now I have a, a house for a hundred thousand dollars that I have zero percent interest on, and a ten thousand. Okay, so he, he just said he's going to prepay interest, but now he's saying there is no interest, so that's really not a true statement. Is we're going to pre-build all the interest in. So I'm going to guarantee you $10,000 of interest. But let's keep watching. Dollar down payment. Now, this is in addition to the difference? Nope. So the purchase price is... Even Jerry's confused. $110,000 okay. $10, down, 0% okay. interest. Okay. okay, so... Okay. 0% interest. Okay, okay so... Okay. So I'm going to guarantee you $10,000 of interest. 10000 down. 
and he's saying it's zero percent interest, but he did say he's prepaying the interest or he's adding it to this to this number. I was with a new investor at the time. They actually <clears throat> brought me the lead, and they said, "Pace, show me how you can buy a house like this with no money out of your pocket." So this is what I did. I went to Susan. I said, Susan, I'm a little bit tight on cash, which I wasn't. But Susan, I'm a little bit tight on cash. What I would love to do is give you the $10,000 down payment, but I want to do it over the course of 12 months. And so on my HUD, my settlement statement that I'll share you, with you guys, she actually seller financed not only the house to me, but she seller financed my down payment. So on a monthly payment, on a, on a six month payment. So I gave her five grand at six months and another five grand at the next six months. Also oh, wasn't even monthly. It wasn't even monthly. Okay. Okay. So what it allowed me to do is I went to the tenant that was living in the property and I said, I'm going to kick you out in about two weeks or you can pay me $1,650 per month and I won't kick you out. Which now you can do because family members gone, so they're no longer the bad guy, right? You're, right? And you're just a normal person that obviously needs to collect rent. 100%. So my seller finance payment to Su Dale and Susan is $375 a month. So I've got $375 a month. On a 110 note or was it a 100 note because you're financing the 100 debt? Note. Okay, 100 note, right? So okay, so let's talk about that. He's got a $375 per month payment on a $100,000 note. Okay, now what he hasn't explained is the terms. Okay, because if it's 0%, then this is gonna be 375 times 12, sounds like about $4,000 a year. Uh, it's gonna take 25 years to pay this off if there's zero interest uh, and it's 375 a month. But for, you know, she did want, she said originally she wanted 8%. But just say this, zero interest, 375, a 25-year note, zero interest. So let's keep watching. So you guys are following that. $100,000 so note. $100,000 note. I've been paying Dale and Susan $375. Then I've got miscellaneous like $275 of insurance, vacancy and repair allocation, just making sure they have a little bit of fluff, you know, all that stuff. So I'm all in. My total cost to own the property is $650. So my net is $1,000 per month is yes. my net cash flow net okay he's not talking about the title fees he's not talking about the escrow fees whenever you buy a property you have escrow fees and you have uh, i mean you'd be a fool to buy a property without title insurance so assuming he's got title so there's like there's two grand there that's really not being discussed but let's keep going multiply that by six months i just made six thousand dollars of which i then paid dale and susan their five thousand dollars every six months so I paid them that my last payment, I made them two payments of $5,000. My last payment was March of this just last month. So I bought it last month, year in March. I paid them, finally paid my $10,000 down payment. Did two, of five, two payments of 5,000. Two payments of 5,000. And now you're doing this as legit real cash flow. Now, now I'm keeping all of it, Yeah. right? Forever. Right, now here's the crazy thing is because our market went crazy, yeah. it's no longer, the ARV is no longer 110. The ARV now is like 160. It appreciated like crazy. Now I don't care so much about the appreciation because I'm gonna hold on to this property for a long time. The main reason is because I have 0% seller finance. So that payment of 375 is paying down my principal 100. So look, this is what's silly about this, to be quite honest, all respect to Pace, but he, he doesn't have a zero interest deal. He paid, uh, if he just, he paid, say the $10,000 down. So let's just assume, he, he said he paid 110. So 10,000 down, he owes $100,000. He owes $100,000, so he added $20,000. $20,000, remember, he referred to that as prepaid interest. $20,000, I mean, at, at, at 8%, that's at least three or four years uh, interest uh, at 8%. And he didn't really talk about whether this, if there's a balloon on this or not. I would imagine there's a balloon. Here's the big risk in this, in this scenario, what he just described. First of all, he said earlier he bought this and then he went to the people, the tenants inside, and he said, hey, I'm going to kick you out in two weeks. The chances are if somebody doesn't pay rent at all and then you go to the door and you say, hey, I'm going to kick you out, they're not going to just suddenly pay you $16.50. Now, it's possible. It's not likely. Okay. Let's just talk about what could have happened in this situation. You make, you commit to buying this property uh, for uh, whatever, like he said, I'm using his numbers. As his value is eighty thousand dollars, he agreed to buy it for one ten. So let's just say on day one of your purchase, uh, you close the deal, and now you go to the tenants and you say, "Hey, you got to start paying me, or I'm going to kick you out." Well, they don't pay you anything. Uh, 
And so now it takes you a month. Let's just, and you'd be lucky. Let's just say a month goes by and now you get them kicked out. Well, now they're kicked out. Well, maybe they trash the place. Okay. So maybe there's a couple thousand dollars that you're going to have to spend minimum. I mean, just to, just for anybody to move out, you almost spent a couple grand, you know, just to paint the place, change the carpet. If you have to, now you can be up there, you know, even more. So, but I'm just want you to think this stuff through. Uh, because a lot of stuff just doesn't get discussed, and that's what bothers me about Payson and other people that talk about stuff being easier than it is. But just take the scenario on its surface, just like he said. So, But let's just say that he went to the door and they said, fine, we'll move out. And so, no, they're not going to pay, just like they haven't been paying, but though, you know, it's going to take them 30 days. Well, now you got 30 days rent loss. So they're $1,650. Uh, you have got, uh, uh, you know, let's just say two or $3,000. We'll just say $2,500 uh, to, you know, just to get it ready. But that's after they move out. They're out in a month. So now you got a month, another month. You're going to lose that second month. So there's another sixteen fifty because that's your second month that's gone by. You need that month, assuming you got them out, to clean up the place. And you know, I don't know if it's going to do the twenty thousand dollars in repair values. He didn't say. So on the third month, now he's going to get his sixteen fifty a month coming in. But he's already lost twenty five hundred dollars in make ready repairs. 2K in the closing cost that he didn't discuss. Uh, 1650 for the month it took to get them out and a month that, to get the, their unit ready. And I think these are all reasonable numbers. So, uh, so we got that. That's 32. That's 33. That's 25. That's 48. So we got $6,800, okay, in a scenario that really is not unusual. It would be, I've listen, I've bought properties where I've had to kick the tenants out and they weren't paying, they weren't good tenants. And I, A, I don't want tenants to pay the rent. Let's say you had that situation. By the way, air conditioner, air conditioner goes out. I, I can show you a receipt. I got two receipts here on my computer, uh, one for 12,000 and I think the other one's for eight or 9,000. That's just two air conditioners in, in you know, a couple of my properties that, that I had replaced just this last week. Let's just say you go, ah, you know what? The economy's not going up. And this isn't such a zero down deal anymore because I've got this issue I didn't think I was going to have. I want to sell it. Well, now you've got a property, guess what, that you owe $110,000 on and it's only worth eighty. Who are you going to sell it to? You know, who are you going to sell it to? In other words, you should have a hedge. When you go buy in a property, you should have a hedge in order to get out. And, and that's what I always have. I always have a hedge. When I buy a property, I buy property under market. I buy it under market because if I buy it under market, my hedge is I can get out of it. I can sell it for I can sell it for for more than I paid for it, no matter what. So I I don't like this deal. I don't like this his zero down scenario. Uh, it requires it's just it's just a very very optimistic uh, view that the and it only works if the values go up. Uh, you know, I guess he could say he doesn't, you know, he said, actually, you know what he said? He said he didn't care if the values go up. Now that is very interesting because guess what? That's all a bank respects is equity. So let, let's just keep watching. Yeah. I have a lot of people go, you're paying full retail. You're crazy. I'm like, equity comes, equity goes, yeah. but the cash will always flow. I saw you put a poll. Okay. That is like the silliest statement I've ever heard. And I've heard some of Pace's students say that equity comes, equity goes, but the cash will always flow. That's a ridiculous statement. That's a statement from somebody with very little experience in real estate. Uh, listen, I've been doing this 40 years. I've seen real estate values plummet. I've seen rents plummet. Uh, and uh, the cash does not always flow. A lot of vacancies. You know, even in an apartment complex, you'll have, you know, people, there, oh, well, I'll always keep this full. No. Uh, people start moving out. They move back home when things get tough, when jobs go away. Uh, so that statement, in fact, let's just play it back. One more time. Equity comes, equity goes, but the cash will always flow. Where they messed up is, is paying full price. And Pace is paying more than full price. So th listen, I'm just telling you, uh, I'll give you an example. Wouldn't be fair if I criticize his no down deal if I didn't uh, show you one of my own. I'm going to show you actually the first deal I ever did. This is back in 1981 when I was 19 years old. And this is probably, it is my favorite no down deal too. And, uh, but it has better fundamentals and I'll explain why. And let's jump to my first property, which was 45030 North Trevor. This is a commercial industrial building I bought when I was 19 years old. This has been like 42 years. Take a look at this. I was 19 and I had started a cabinet shop and I needed a place to rent. This is a 5,900 square foot uh, industrial building. 
And this was a big deal, you know. I was 19 years old, and uh, this is it over here on the left. And basically what I had is uh, 2,400 square feet of uh, stucco in the front, 3,500 square feet of uh, metal building in the back. And uh, like I said, I was cabinet maker. You know, I'd, I'd been working out of another shop uh, and I was living in. And they said, hey, we're worried about you burning up in this thing. So I had to look for another place. I found this place and I got this place owner financed. And so let me explain what I did quickly here. Then I'll go to the whiteboard. All right, so basically this is the first deal I bought. I was 19 years old. Uh, I'm going to go over to the whiteboard there. So look, basically I have a property, 1981. Interest rates are high considered by today's rates anyhow. Not, not too bad at the moment. But 45030 Trevor, Lancaster, California. Uh, 5,900 square foot industrial building. This is version of a nothing down creative financing deal. And I've done a lot of stuff like this. But this is my favorite because it was my first, but it was also profitable. And the difference between <clears throat> my deal and Paces is that, A, I wasn't overpaying for it. I bought this property for $100,000. Okay. So no, not much equity. I wasn't paying too much for it. The as is value, what it was worth at the time, was probably maybe $80,000. So uh, in order to get financing. <clears throat> I got owner financing. Well, let's talk about how I got to what was essentially a zero down deal. Okay, I'm buying it uh, for $110,000. I had to put a $500 deposit down. And then I had uh, a $10,000 down payment. Now, here's the deal. $500 as out of pocket. That was on day one to get the property tied up. But... The deal that I negotiated was uh, $10,000 down, a $100,000 note that they would carry at 10% interest, which was the going rate at the time. It was actually a decent rate at the time. The payment would then be $1,000 per month that just barely covered the interest, to be honest. And then I think I had a balloon due in about five or 10 years, which didn't matter because I was buying the property under market day one. Anyways, so I have a six-month escrow. Now, this is the key that makes this a zero down deal. I got a six month escrow. Okay, oh great, you got six months to close it. Well, guess what? I got six months with, right here, the right to occupy, the right to occupy. So the day they signed this contract, and what I did, and what I pointed out to them, is that there was graffiti on the building, there was graffiti on the building next to me, and I put the fear in the sellers and said, hey, look, we, we got the, we got the you know, six months, we agree on all this, but I want the access to the property so I can protect the property. I can keep vandals from putting more graffiti on it, possibly breaking in and doing damage to the building. And they were like, hey, that sounds great. So this right to occupy. Now, remember, I told you the place before I was living in it and I had my company out of it. This is a big building, okay? I mean, not big today's standards to me, but it was a big, it was a big cabinet shop. It was big, really big for someone 19, but 5,900 square feet. I immediately moved in, so I was no longer paying personal rent, which back then was, for me, was probably 500 bucks a month. Uh, and then for the shop itself, another, you know, I was by renting a much smaller shop for, I think, 800. So right there, there's $1,300 a month that I'm saving. But I was able to rent out part of the building as well. And I think I was getting 700 roughly a month from a couple other guys, uh, uh, Art Ralston, another cabinet guy, that, that crafty guy. Anyways, it doesn't matter. But the bottom line is between that 700 and uh, the 1300 that I, I wasn't having to pay, I wasn't having to pay anybody. So I was rent-free for six months. So basically I had uh, 1300 because I lived in this building, and the uh, I didn't have to pay for a cabinet shop because this, this was the shop, but also I had space to spare to rent out. So I had basically $2,000 a month coming in. And so in six months, I had $12,000 saved. I saved it because I didn't have to pay it out. I was collecting rent from one of the guys, and plus I was, you know, I just didn't have to pay it, so I saved it. So at the end of the six months, when I needed to come up with my $10,000, I had taken in uh, 12000 because 2000 times six, 
uh, I got twelve thousand dollars on closing. That twelve thousand dollars took care of the ninety five hundred dollars I needed to make up from my five hundred dollar deposit to make the ten thousand down, and then the other two grand uh, I, I had left over, or twenty five hundred actually left over, uh, to pay closing costs and that sort of thing. Basically, uh, the day it closed, you know, it was more than a nothing down deal because. I'd already probably even made a little bit of money. But that was fantastic. In fact, the day I uh, closed this deal, I went to pull the for sale sign out of the front, from the front of the building, and a guy stops by and he says, hey, what do they want for it? He thought I was installing the sign. And I go, no, I just bought it. He goes, what'd you pay for it? I go, pay 10, uh, 110. He said, he goes, look, he goes, I'll give you $20,000 more for it than you just paid for it. So. Just that day, one, and I knew it was I knew it was a great deal already, but that confirmed it. There was twenty thousand. So in other words, where Pace bought a hundred in fact it's funny, they're both the same price. Pace paid a hundred and ten thousand for an eighty thousand dollar building. I paid a hundred and ten thousand dollars for a hundred and thirty thousand dollar building. And so the difference is if things you know, went south, if I got hurt or damaged and I couldn't, you know, do what I wanted to, my planes, you know, my plans got interrupted, I would be able to sell this building for a profit. Uh, if it sat vacant, I could sell this property for a profit. In Pace's case, he had the concerns of a tenant that was already not paying, that could continue to not pay, that he'd have to throw out, he'd have to redo the property, paint it, uh, you know, A, it takes time to get people out of, you know, when they hold over, it's tough. Uh, and he, in his deal, he could have gone from, you know, you know to, to, to having to spend another five grand out of pocket just to get it rented in order to recoup the money he needed for the, the down payment. Uh, where this one here, day one, I, I didn't even have to move in. I could have sold it for more. So that, that's what I'm saying. There's much easier ways to make money without having to take really unnecessary risks. And that's a big, big unnecessary risk. So that's my, that's my nothing down deal. You take it for what it's worth, but this is a much safer way to go. All right, so here we are back again. <clears throat> and these are some of the things you can do for negotiating. <clears throat> I never like to, you know, uh, offend a seller, but, you know, it, pointing out, like you can't see it, see the graffiti on this, this is on the building next door to me. Uh, and, but this is mine. But mine looked, it was rougher than this. This actually looks nicer. Uh, and I lived inside this building. It was actually a, a, a decent little apartment. Um, I'll show you here on the other side. Right here on the side, this was actually the entrance to my little apartment that was uh, within this building. Anyhow, that was 42 years ago, 1981. That was 42 years ago. And real estate hasn't changed. So this is my page, Flip Anything USA. And I just want you to see behind uh, my head here, these are students of mine. Uh, Rich here he made over 800,000 cash on his first deal, and he made another 250 just, just before that. And now he's got over $3 million worth of commercial industrial rentals, beautiful buildings that, uh, and this is in two and a half years, or less than two and a half years. Uh, Mike... Bought three houses right away and doubled his money. Uh, Ken here, uh, he, this, he made 600000 on this deal, but he bought two more after that, and now he's up to like a million four. Tina here, great girl. She, she uh, flipped a couple lots, made seventy. dollars uh, Ron here is up to $3 million. When I interviewed him here, he had made 200000 in a very short time. Garrett made twenty five grand, and he's made a couple hundred grand since. Chris here, over half a million. He's made, he's made 180000 just in the last six months, he even quit his job. Uh, Liam here, 560000 Steve here, over a million. Uh, Kai here, over 200000 And Shane, uh, about 200000 And other people that I have not had time. And Jerry, over a million and a half. Uh, th these, these are the kinds of success stories. But these are people that are applying the methods that I teach that I've been doing for so long. But applying the, the logic are, are the same formula that he has here if if his uh, you know i've heard him say he's got 150 million dollars in property to the standard that he uses for building wealth and he's already said it you heard him say it right out of his own mouth he said i don't care about equity okay then potentially if he has a uh, hundred million dollars or 110 million dollars uh 
it, it's 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 really not a hundred and ten million dollars. He's got a hundred and ten million dollars debt on eighty million dollars worth of property. I'd be curious to know if he's ever made a profit. Has he ever? I mean, you know, he's teaching people how to make. Has he ever made a million dollars on a piece of real estate or half a million dollars? I, I'd be curious to see it because I've never seen a testimonial uh, of any consequence from Pace Morby where they made any money at all. And you know, listen, when you're a parent, you look at a school. You look at the school for the students. You want to see good-looking students. So you don't really pick a school or a mentorship by its teacher as much as you by the results of the teacher. And see, so look at that. I want you, when you, when you look at Pace, take a look at his students and, and see what kind of testimonials, what kind of wealth his students have created for themselves. Because based on this, uh, success looks like a negative equity. In other words, that's the easiest thing in the world. Shoot, I got a lot of people, if you want to buy a property, I'll, I'll, you know, create negative equities, quite easy to do. If you set your standards really low for buying property that at full value or negative by at you know at a value that is more than than the, the value that you can sell it for uh then here you go so hey if you like what you heard here if you like the different perspective on things uh please hit that like button hit that subscribe button and uh, it helps the channel and i will always share with you and i will never mislead you been doing this a very long time made a lot of money uh you can go to my uh, mentorship or my webinar that i have thursday night 7 p.m uh, i'll show you how i made my first million in the 80s when I was in my 20s and I'll show you how I've made tens of millions since and there is no deal that was particularly like this don't don't get me wrong I've done a lot of creative finance and a lot of owner carry both sides I've done a lot of you know balloon payments after X a number of years and different things listen when someone wants to sell and a buyer wants to buy that's a wonderful combination and that's what I love about real estate is uh, the rules are infinite in other words you can you, you, a buyer and a seller can make any deal within any crazy terms they want they can do it, it, it that's the beauty of real estate uh, please hit that like button hit that subscribe button and I said, uh, get into the webinar. Learn how to make millions of dollars in real estate. I've made tens of millions over my lifetime, and I'm showing people how to do it. Get in my free webinar. I have it every Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. Go to the link below. Flip anything, usa.com slash webinar. Sign up for it. You can talk to me face to face if you want. Don't waste any time. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. You don't want to miss my channel. I've been doing it for years.